over the hills and far away, as we cross over the lands that make up the gap between the worlds of Cheddar, Wells, and Glastonbury. The first thing we encounter as we travel up the gorge is the Cheddar Cheese Works on the left hand side. Records show this cheese has been produced since the 12th century. A pipe roll of King Henry II from 1170 shows the purchase of such cheese uh, at the price of a farthing per pound, about £10.30. The cheese is also stored for its maturing process in the caves that Cheddar has to offer. As we pass up the gorge, on the right hand side we notice an entrance, the entrances for the caves. The larger of the two is known as Goff's Cave, and the smaller is Cox's Cave. They are named after their respective discoverers. The first of which, Goff's Cave, was discovered in 1903, leads around 400 metres into the rock face and contains a variety of large rock chambers and formations. Cox's Cave, discovered in 1837, is smaller, but contains many intricate formations. These are now both owned by the Longley Estate. These caves are the inspiration for the caves behind Helm's Deep in J.R.R. Tolkien's The Two Towers, part of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. As we begin our ascent up the gorge, we cannot help but marvel at the steep magnificence of the cliff faces that surround us. The gorge was formed by meltwater floods during the cold periglacial periods which have occurred over the last 1.2 million years. During the ice ages, permafrost blocked the caves with ice and frozen mud and made the limestone impermeable. When this melted during the summers, water was forced to flow on the surface and carved out the gorge as you see it before you today. Also, during the summer periods, the water flowed underground through the permeable limestone, creating the caves, leaving the gorge dry, so that today much of the gorge has no river until the underground Cheddar Yeo River emerges in the lower part from Goff's Cave. Today, the water is collected into reservoirs and is maintained by Bristol Water. is also a tale of two owners. The south side of the gorge is owned and administrated by the Marquess of Bath. The north side is owned by the National Trust. The gorge remains a popular attraction to all visitors. Half a million visitors per year arrive. Once up and out of the gorge, the road becomes flat. We are now up on the Mendips and heading towards Priddy. Priddy itself has an annual folk festival and sheep fair which has been held since 1348. Often described as England's smallest city, Wells actually has a population of 12,000 and with a built up area of just 3.2 square kilometres Wells has had city status since medieval times because of the presence of the Wells Cathedral. As we travel around the corner here we can discover that there is a market on. This market is on Wednesdays and Saturdays and sells a variety of items including fruit and veg all the way to tapestries and interesting paintings of the Queen. The city was a Roman settlement that became an important centre under the Anglo-Saxons when King Ein of Wessex founded a minister church in 704. During the English Civil War in 1642 to 1651, a monthly 
became known as the Siege of Wells, the city found itself surrounded by parliamentarian guns on the Bristol, Glastonbury and Shepton Valley sides. Colonel William Stroud had 2,000 men and 150 horse. The Royalists evacuated the city. Parliamentarian troops then used the cathedral to stable their horses and damaged much of the ornate sculpture by using it for firing practice. Built in 1176 to 1450 to replace an earlier church on the site in 705, Wells Cathedral is moderately sized for an English cathedral. The cathedral itself has many styles and design features which reflect the time period in which it has stood for. Its Gothic architecture is mostly in early English style of the late 12th century. The east end retains much ancient stained glass, unlike many cathedrals of monostatic foundation. Wells has many surviving secular buildings linked to its chapter of secular canons, including the Bishop's Palace and the 15th century residential Vicar's Close. It is a Grade 1 listed building. Each year, 150,000 people attend services and another 300,000 visit as tourists. Entry is free, visitors are encouraged to make a donation. Wells takes its name from St Andrew, due to the free wells dedicated to him. One in the marketplace and two within the grounds of the Bishop's Palace and Cathedral. Glastonbury. You will not find a more wretched place of scum or villainy. It's not something you'd say about Glastonbury. Oh, it's so wonderful to see you, Glastonbury. Wow, it's so incredibly busy today. Looks like half the Shire's been invited, and the rest of them are turning up anyway. And so life in the Shire goes on, as it has done very much during this age. Comings and goings, and those comings and going happen gradually and slowly if they come at all. I must pop by the inn later to check out who is in there. The information could become useful to explore. But first, off to the King Arthur. Church of St Benedict on the left here. It was created in the 15th century. And finally, the King Arthur Pub. It's time to go for a walk and see what we can see. As we traverse the gauntlet, we can see handmade gifts and bespoke delights you'll see. This is a place where you're going to find splendour for the loved ones that you might have in your life. Once described as one of the most ambitious parish churches in Somerset, the Church of St John stands here in all its glory created in the 15th century. Can you see the light? This is a shop that sells those, which are very fair prices. Though how have originally. This charming shop, any spiritualist should easily fall in love with. The Blessed Assembly Rooms of Glastonbury. Many acts and interesting events have happened here. On December the 4th, the Pogues are playing here. The George Hotel and Pilgrim's Inn it seems to be unchanged since the 15th century. Well, that 
true feeling of healing and tranquility, you must surely visit the Glastonbury experience. This enchanted alleyway has some beautiful sights to be seen. Take some time and lose yourself in this different world. explore past as new. We will take in the sight of the Toron route. However, before we go too far, it is wise to mention Glastonbury Abbey. This abbey was founded in the 8th century and enlarged in the 10th. However, it was suppressed during the dissolution of the monasteries. century Glastonbury area has been associated with the legend of King Arthur. The belief that Glastonbury was in fact Avalon. Rumours have it that the Holy Grail was even buried underneath Glastonbury Tor's mound. Goodbye to Glastonbury as we move on. Street. Street is a small neighbouring suburb of Glastonbury, but it's a great shopping destination as it features Clark's Village retail outlet. This features many shops and expensive boutique stores which can be found at discounted prices. church on the left as we pass is the Holy Trinity Church. This is located in the parish village of Water. Next we pass on the left again, 17th century pub, known as the Piper's Inn. This is a great place for a meal on the right hand side, Stratley is Folly. This was built in 1838 by the very wealthy William Stratley. That concludes our tour of this area of Somerset. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll uh, be back soon on the ring. Hopefully, more areas of the UK explore with the history. Thank you. Bye.